So these two meals, they may look identical and they are identical, but inside your body, they're not even close. Same plate, same calories, same macros even, but one of these meals is more inflammatory, it spikes your stress hormones, and can literally change how much of it you store versus burn, just because of the state you're in when you're eating it. And this isn't a woo-woo talk either. There are actual lab experiments and human studies showing that your mood and your stress levels, even what you believe that you're eating, change your hormones and digestion and weight outcomes and long-term health as well. There's even this popular or well-known uh, rabbit experiment where two groups of rabbits were fed the exact same high cholesterol diet and one group of them developed terrible arteries as you would expect with a high cholesterol diet and the other group didn't despite eating the same thing. And the only real difference was how they were treated. The rabbits that were petted and cared for had completely different health outcomes on the same bad diet. Now that story never actually became a formal scientific paper, but what's interesting is that newer human research is actually showing a similar pattern to this. And it's showing that your internal state can actually change how your body responds to identical foods. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the part of digestion and metabolism that almost no one talks about and why the same meal can turn into healthy fuel or energy on one day and inflammation on another. And I'll also share a few simple shifts that you can make before your next meal so that your food actually works for you and not against you. So my name's Bonnie. I am the renegade dietitian, blending research and real world experience to teach you the parts of nutrition that most people never actually explain or go through. So if you do want more videos like this, then please hit that like and subscribe button. I do upload weekly. Okay. So if you are someone that feels like you're doing everything right when it comes to your food and all the things, but you're still not seeing results that you'd expect or you're not as healthy as you want to be, then what I'm about to share might be the missing piece. So let me show you what I mean, because one of the clearest examples actually comes from this famous milkshake study. So researchers, they gave people the exact same milkshake on two different days. So it had the same calories, the same ingredients, same everything in it. But one of the days it was labeled as a 620 calorie indulgent shake. And the other day it was labeled as a light, healthy 140 calorie shake. It's the only difference. And surprisingly, their bodies actually reacted as if the shakes were completely different. When people believed that the shake was an indulgent, you know, high energy food, their hunger hormone called ghrelin dropped much more. Their bodies behaved like they'd eaten something actually satisfying and heavy or higher in caloric density. Whereas when they believed that it was the low calorie one and healthy, their ghrelin barely changed, their hormone ghrelin. So same shake, just a different belief and a different hormone response as a result of that. So already we can see something important, right? That your body isn't just reacting to the food, it's actually reacting to your experience of the food or your perception of the food. And if a label can shift your physiology, imagine what happens when your whole nervous system is involved. Because belief is one thing, but stress takes this to a whole other level. So in another study, women were actually, again, all given the same high fat meal but some of them had gone through stressful events the day before. So stressful events being things like arguments or work pressure, those kind of things. And like the previous study, their bodies handled the meal completely different. So the stress group, they burned fewer calories from the same food. Their insulin also went higher. Their fat burning slowed down and their blood fats spiked more. So now we're kind of seeing a bit of a pattern, right? If your mindset can change hormones and your stress levels can change metabolism, then your internal state is basically the lens through which your body interprets your food. And that lens can totally change the outcome without the food itself actually changing. And, and it doesn't just stop there or at how you burn calories. Chronic stress actually changes what you crave and how much you eat. So there's a study that looked at women under high chronic stress and compared them to women under low stress. But the researchers did something really interesting. They also measured how their cortisol responded to a stressful moment. And in some of the high stress women, cortisol actually barely rose at all. Their stress system had basically gone flat, 
like it had been switched on for so long that it just stopped responding or reacting. And this group, you might think that's good, but this group, the ones with the blunted stress response, ate very differently as a result of that. So on both stressful days and normal days, they ate significantly more calories from chocolate cake in this study. And they also had higher body fat and more fat mass overall and stronger cravings. And on top of that, in women over 45, high chronic stress showed up as eating fewer vegetables and more total calories at a buffet, even when the foods available were the same between the groups. So this wasn't about willpower either. This was chronic stress reshaping the eating system. So when cortisol stops responding normally, your body actually leans harder on food, especially comfort foods, as a way to regulate itself, basically. So this is just one more example of how our internal state can change how your body actually uses the same foods. So as if all of that kind of wasn't bad enough in itself, research also shows that stress actually also reaches your gut too, like literally reaches your gut. There's a study showing that acute stress can make your gut more leaky, meaning, you know, tiny particles pass through the gut wall more easily. And when that happens, your body becomes more reactive to things and more inflamed. So think of it like this. If your gut is calm, food moves through a lot more smoothly and easier. If your gut is stressed, it's like trying to eat during an earthquake. Your gut, you know, it's not as good at processing food when you're in a state like that, right? It's distracted and it's in survival mode, not digestion mode. So this is why stress can make your stomach, you know, feel crampy or bloated or just weird in general. And why the same meal can feel amazing one day and heavy and groggy the next. Now on the flip side, when your body feels calm and safe, something called the parasympathetic nervous system turns on. So I think of it, as your digestion mode. And this state increases blood flow to your stomach and it also helps your enzymes work better and moves food through in a smooth wave pattern through your gut or your digestive system. So when this mode is switched on, your body is much better at using the food that you eat. So now we've seen all, kind of, all three layers, right? Your beliefs affect your hormones, your stress affects your metabolism and your state affects digestion. So all of these things are changed by your internal state. And together they explain why two identical meals can behave completely differently inside two different bodies or even inside the same body on two different days. And there's another layer to this as well that almost no one talks about, but the science is actually really strong. And it's not just your personal stress or your personal mindset that changes how your body processes food. It's also the environment that you're eating it in and the people that you're eating with or around. And this is where the research gets even more fascinating. So studies show that when you're around people who make you feel safe, so, you know, friends, family, or just someone that you can actually relax around, your body automatically lowers cortisol and stress hormones. Now, one large review found that social support directly reduces inflammation, lowers sympathetic nervous system activity and increases parasympathetic tone. So the exact state that your body needs for healthy digestion. So if you've ever noticed that eating with, you know, certain people feels a lot calmer and grounding, that's actually physiology at work. So take note of who those people are because you want to be eating with them more often than anyone else or people who make you feel the opposite way. Now, when you feel connected to someone, even just comfortable with them, your body actually releases small amounts of oxytocin, which activates the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, it's basically, in simple terms, the go button for digestion, right? So it slows your heart rate, it lowers cortisol, and it increases stomach motility. And it also improves the release of digestive enzymes too. So simply being around someone that you trust or enjoy can actually change how well your body handles a meal too. But there's kind of another layer to that as well. So your social environment affects the things we just talked about, right? And it affects your mood as well, but it actually changes how your body responds to stress around food too. So for example, researchers in Switzerland, they ran a study where they put people through a really stressful situation, something that was actually designed to spike their cortisol levels, and they measured how their bodies reacted. And now here's the interesting part. Half the people, they went through it alone, right? And the other half, they had even, you know, a small amount of social support. So someone gently encouraging them or just being kind or even just sitting with them. And the group with social support 
showed a much smaller cortisol spike. Now this matters because cortisol is one of the big hormones that disrupts digestion and actually pushes your body towards stress eating behaviors. So things like craving high caloric foods and slower stomach motility and storing more energy as well and burning less too. So when that cortisol spike is lower, the downstream effects, including stress-driven changes in appetite and metabolism are also lower, right? So basically what I'm saying by all of that is even mild social support literally softens the blow of stress on your biology and how you respond to food. So if your day is chaotic, but your company is calming, your body processes the meal more like a calm day, which is mind blowing, at least in my opinion. So that is great for people who really struggle to lower their stress levels because of maybe it's work situation or things that are out of your control. Still important to try and do that, but just simply being around someone that you're comfortable with, that is calming, that is supportive, can help to lower the stress-related response uh, when you're eating that food, regardless of how stressed you are. Now, this next one, even I was actually surprised by when I was researching this. So researchers found that loneliness increases inflammation and stress hormones, even when diet, sleep, and exercise are controlled, which I was surprised by that part. So two people could eat the same diet but the one who feels supported, like I said before, and connected may have a totally different internal response compared to someone who feels isolated or on edge. So this is very similar to the last study that I just mentioned where someone was alone versus, you know, with someone supportive. But even when they're controlling for things like diet and exercise and when your overall health is good, loneliness is still a isolated factor that can significantly impact how your body processes food. So now we kind of understand just how important our internal state is, who we eat with, how supportive we feel when we're eating, our perception of the food, all of these things. We understand how heavily this can actually impact the way that your body breaks down, digests, metabolism, and even uses and stores and burns the food that we eat, regardless of any other external situations or things going on in your life and your health. But I don't want to just leave you with that information and nothing to kind of do to help improve your situation. So let's go through a few things that you can actually do before your next meal that may help if you are someone who is stressed or feels like these factors might be impacting the way that your body is using food. So the first one being take five slow breaths. So you want to do this before your first bite. You just want to take five deep and slow breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And the reason for that is because slow breathing is one of the fastest ways to actually shift your body into a parasympathetic state or rest and digest state. And studies show that even a minute of slow controlled breathing increases vagal tone and that's your basically your digestion switch. And it lowers your stress hormones too, like cortisol. So those five slow deep breaths are basically telling your stomach, you know, Okay, it's safe, you can do your job now, I'm ready to digest. So that is one of the most simple but most effective things that you can do before you take your first bite with any meal, especially if you're feeling stressed or anxious or anything like that before. Now the second tip is to remove at least one distraction. So you don't need to remove them all if you've got lots going on, but even just one. For example, putting your phone face down or turning off the show that you're half watching or half ignoring. Because we know that stress and constant stimulation keep your body in that go, go, go mode. So anything that lowers that, that background buzz, makes it easier for your digestion to do its job properly. If your brain is multitasking, then so is your digestion. So if you can try and reduce or eliminate as many distractions as you can, your body will thank you for it. And then third, whenever you can, try and eat around safety or comfort. So that might be sharing a meal with someone that you feel really calm with or come around. It might be sitting in a space at home that feels super cozy instead of rushed. It might be putting on your favorite music that actually makes your nervous system relax or calm down or even feel happy. We have solid evidence that actually feeling supported and connected lowers those stress hormones, reduces inflammation, and improves that parasympathetic activity, all of which help your body handle food better. And if you're eating alone, you can still create that sense of safety for yourself. Like I said before, you know, a calmer space or corner in the room or a few deep breaths or a moment to remind yourself, you know, I'm safe, I have time to eat this, I can slow down to do so. And your body responds well to that as well. So don't just think that if you're alone that, you know, you're doomed and you can't do anything about it because all of these things will help. 
So yes, the same meal can create very different outcomes depending on your state that you're in and the environment around you and the people around you. So your body, it's so much more than just counting calories. It's not just that at all. It's constantly reading your stress levels, your beliefs, your gut, and even the people that you're sitting with, right? So to everyone who says that it's just calories in, calories out, oh, that frustrates me so much because it's so much deeper than this. And this isn't the only thing either. This is just highlighting one of those other factors that are involved here. But the good news with all of this is that you don't actually need a perfect diet to start feeling a difference with all of this. Sometimes the biggest changes literally are noticed after just taking those five breaths or one less distraction and a little more safety at the table. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful and useful and you learned something today and have something to take away from it. And if you did, please remember to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep making more of these videos. And if you have any questions, please pop those in the comments below. I'd also love to hear if you try any of the things that I suggest in this video, please tell me how your experience was and if you noticed any difference or even over time, if you know, if it's that one last thing that helps you achieve the results that you want, I really want to hear all of your experiences. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.